Hey guys, it's Andrew here from Medbury Miniatures. So this is the fourth video in our series of sculpting our first 28mm miniature. So on screen right now, I've got one of my different Saxon Hull Skulls. Um, this is also part of the same Patreon um, release. So with this video, we're going to talk about sculpting the helmet, some facial hair, hair, um, the weapons, and we're going to probably do a shield as well for this one. So this might end up being a slightly longer video. So I, I've got this one loaded in just so we can look at some of the um, components I've already created. And I've also got loaded in one of my um, helmet builder tools. So when I um, go to make a model, I've already made all of the different helmets we can see on the side. So if I, let me get rid of the one I've got now. So if I wanted to come in and make a helmet, I would load in one of my pre-made ones then I could add in the uh, bits that go across the top. Then once I'm done, I would merge visible, and this would be a tool, as well as these coifs here. So I've got a cloth coif, um, gamson, and then chain, the chain one down here apparently. And also with it, the chain coif, once it's been pulled down, if you wanted a bare head. So we're not gonna worry about the coifs for now because we wanna do hair. I think hair is a bit more interesting and um, it relates a lot more to the fantasy models that I think most people would be making. So we're gonna probably start by making this helmet. So the key parts of these helmets are gonna be, um, we've gotta make the, the sort of the conical cone shape, um, a rim, a nose guard, and maybe some decoration on top. So I've got loaded up here a couple of images on Google. So when you type in Anglo-Saxon helmets, sort of the sort of thing you'd see in like the Rohan and stuff like that, the first thing you kind of find is this Sutton Ho helmet. Um, I got really lucky last year when I was in England and I got to see it. Um, didn't think that would happen, but yeah. So obviously this is quite a big um, influence to something like um, Thaden's helmet in um, Lord of the Rings and whatnot. So, but anyway, here I've got, I found from this folk on DeviantArt, he's got a couple of good drawings of some Anglo-Saxon helmets. So we're gonna have take a bit of inspiration from these and it's the same stuff that we're going to find all over the internet. I'm not quite sure what I think about the scales on that one though, but who knows. And here's a couple of good um, recreations. So we're going to try and make one with cheat guards, uh, probably the um, pieces across the top. Um, we'll see about rivets and also a fancy nose and eye guard. So let's start there. Um, I think we're going to try and probably going to base it around this one here and this one here. I think they're probably a good place to start. Maybe a bit pointier. In another video, it'd be great to come and make this helmet, this, um, the Sutton Ho one we've got here. This is a recreation um, of what people think that, this is the real one they found, and this is what people think it looked like. Um, both are in the British Museum. Anyway, so back to our um, uh, ZBrush. So let's go to, I've come to, got to delete this tool um, down the line, actually, because we want to start by just sculpting our head. So this is our tool. Um, hang on. No, no, no. Here we go. So, all right, so this is our tool. I'm going to uh, delete some of the other ones as we go. So we want to start making, on top of this head, both a beard, hair, and massage. So we're, let's do that first. Let's do the facial hair first. So if we go make polymesh 3D, we've isolated just this head, we can start sculpting. Um, and then whatever we make here, we'll import back into our other thing. So if we mask off this part of the, where the beard's gonna go, a moustache, up to about the ear. Let's not worry about um, how it connects to the hair just yet. So there you go, it's kind of darker like someone's beard would be anyway. Back down to extract. Um, and like we've done before, where we just inflate and Dynamesh to just give us something to work with. So symmetry again turned on with X. So this needs to blend to the face. So obviously the facial hair doesn't need to stick up like quite that much. So we're gonna pull it in into the cheeks, especially around here. And the same thing we're gonna do around the nose in a little bit. Lift it up just above the mouth and down the local lip and push this in a little bit there as well. And under here, we've got to pull it back into the face. We're going to change the bottom of the beard when we optimize it for 3D printing, but for now, it's fine. And let's push that in as well. 
There you go, that kind of looks like the animated Captain Rex from Star Wars Rebels. Okay, cool. So now let's turn up this resolution. Let's go to about a thousand. And um, damn standard brush. And just make a, a bunch of lines going away from the face. This is not obviously the final beard, it's just. I like to start sculpting things like facial hair with um, just seeing like where it goes. So just doing a bunch of quick sort of sketch lines and then coming back, adding some more in the other direction and seeing kind of what takes off. And um, just make it as furry as you can. Um, then we'll come in and once we find some of these sort of ridges, we'll make them into like bits of hair or clumps of hair. And then we're going to smooth it down later, sort of once we've got some sort of texture. So I recommend um, if you know that the character is going to have a beard straight away, and most of the time we're going to be doing heads separately, I'm going to attach the head on this model that we're doing right now because it's part of the range. But if you're doing the head separately, then as soon as you can, join the beard to the face just so that you can blend it in at the sides. So what I'm doing at the moment is kind of creating like almost a fur texture where I've got like a V pointed down where it points away. Um, like at the side, we can see these sort of these V's that are kind of overlapping. And they kind of came from this sort of cross stitch sort of pattern we had done before. Yeah, there we go. That's a very sort of furry bit. So let's dynamesh that. Smooth it down a bit. There we go. So it's still got the shape of the beard and a big moustache. All right, so I want to merge that down and then probably going to just join those together now because this is going to be final. Back up to that sort of resolution. And now once I join them in, it's pretty seamless. And so I can still see the bottom lip and the top lip you don't really see with people with big moustaches like this. So now we want big, long, flowing hair. We're not really going to see the hair at the back, but for the sake of this, let's do the hair on top as well, just in case you're modeling something without a, um, a helmet. But we'll spend most of the time worrying about the stuff at the bottom and you can just infer what goes um, on at top. So same thing again. Oh, sorry, what have I done? I... Yeah, extract. There we go. All right, so inflate. Same thing again. Now, because obviously this has wrapped itself around the neck, um, we need to bring that out. So the way we're going to do that is just back face mask, pull it out to the side, now, I didn't really do that mirror, so I'm just going to mirror that. I think normally I would sculpt over the ear, and then we would bring the ear back once we decided where some of their strands of hair are going to be. Let's keep symmetry on that mirror one. There we go. Alright, so let's bring that in, that in. Alright, so now one of the important things to do is sort of find the hairline. And so, like the widow's peak and such like that. Um, so, presumably, this would be a man in his 30s or 40s. So, it's um, I'm going to bring it a little bit further back. But I think a point's always nice. And let's bring it in at the side. So, this is quite thick. Once, and what well, looks quite thick, but once we start adding strands of hair, it's going to look thin. Just like how the beard kind of fits the face now and it's blended in, the hair is going to be a little bit similar. But so I normally start with the bottom and the sides, and then I do the bit on the top. So I would do that firstly with the standard brush and my favorite alpha. So this is the sort of like long flowing Aragon esque hair. I think that's um, for long hair, that's where I start. Sometimes I do short hair for some of the models, and then it's just, um, you know, picking your hairstyle. But if, so we're just picturing this hair is flowing over the top, over the ears, and back down the sides. So 
just do a bunch of lines, not straight either. Do them overlapping, um, curly, straight. Um, try not to put them terribly much on top of each other. And don't worry about the symmetry at being on and saying, oh, it's going to look symmetrical, because once it's, we've done the strands, we'll pull them in different directions. Um, and the front, don't forget about the front as well. Alright, now let's go to subtract, let's turn the geometry back up. Okay, so now I'm doing the opposite with some recesses, and it still looks very messy at the moment. And like I said with the beard, I like to sort of find it as we go. Um, I'm going to do this as the hair, just mostly being slicked back over the head. But I don't like the symmetry for now because we're going to do the top. So I want it to run to one side, and then over this way. All right, so um, if, if this was long straight hair, then we would do it quite neatly, but because this is going to be thick wavy hair, now the next step is going in and giving it some waves. So that's just going to be symmetry turned on. We're just going to scale this brush up, turn the intensity down, and do some like lines, kind of like a little bit of a bowl, kind of like that. And let's get rid of that. Some of, sorry, some of that head as well. There we go. So now it's kind of got the shape of hair, but the strands are a bit messy. So let's just smooth some of those down. But now that we've, we can kind of see some have, to have you know, taken over, some are more prominent than others. Symmetry is still on for a bit because we'll do the middle later. Let's just go through and add some specific ones that we that we can see that have kind of already formed by themselves. So let's get this one here. That's sort of become one. There. I wouldn't really worry about doing it in the recesses. Um, we get more contrast doing it, the stuff that's on top. Obviously, you can go in and do that as well, but once you put, when you put a wash on it, it's going, we're only really going to paint the stuff on the outside. I guess it's blonde hair, but still, the highlights are going to be sort of what's on top. But anyway, that's okay, so that's starting to look more like miniature sculpted hair. It's got, it's got texture to it. You can see that there are strands and clumps and none of them are sort of running in a line. Just want to make these a bit sharper. All right, so and we're doing this symmetrical, but when we position the head on the model, we're going to, if he's looking to the left or the right, we're going to pull the bottom of the hair side to side. If you're making a head that's going to be separate from the, from the model, that's, that gets a bit tricky because, um, uh, like, is this going to be in contact with the, like, the behind the neck? So then you would kind of push it sort of away to give it, like, some space. And then, but that's why, like I said before, when... I do hair on the model. That normally means I sit the head down. But okay, so let's. I'm happy with that hair for now. Merge down. It's kind of it's joining well enough. Don't mesh. Okay, cool. Let's just join that at the sides. So it's kind of already by itself, kind of gone over the ear, which is fine. Um, covers up the ears that we didn't really do much on earlier. Cool. There we go. So that's a, a long wavy hair and a gruff beard. Looks good. And it's a nice face as well. Um, yeah, quite a prominent nose. That'd be a nice head to not use with a helmet actually. But we'll do it. We need to do a helmet for the series. So if we go back to this one, insert, and then let's get rid of the other helmet. Now, I wanted to delete this head because you should already have this saved. Um, as you work, every time you do, you update it. 
save the tool. Don't save the project, because if you save the project, you save all of these extra sub tools that we're going to come in in a second and just delete. But we want to be loading tools into our project, not um, loading. So we can load individual tools. Um, so here are some of my um, Saxon ones. I'm going to go back to the YouTube though. And that's just going to be one tool. But if you load tools from project, you're going to load, all, load them all. But, um, all that does is just clutter up the um, tool palette. And when it does its quick saves, the files get really, really big. So yeah, stick to, stick to saving the tools. It's a much um, quicker workflow. All right, so now, okay, let's just get rid of this. Just bear with me. Okay, cool. Got our head loaded in. All of a sudden, the figure looks, um, now the head's just a bit um, thicker because it's got the hair. It looks a bit more um, sort of proportional. It was looking a bit skinny before, but now it's looking pretty good. So, okay, now we want to make the helmet. And that's going to mean cutting away some of that hair in a minute. So we're going to go to one of our heads. I want to go delete the other. Oh, no, no, no. Okay, uh, make polymesh 3D. So, okay, from here, we're gonna to start to make the helmet. So let's go back to uh, some of the helmets I've got up from earlier. On the other on this side, sorry. And look at where they're sitting on a face. So the bottom of the helmet runs in line with the eyes. And then the rim sort of start, goes up from the eye line. And some of them have the eyes cut out. And so that's where we're going to sort of start. And then it's a little bit taller than it is to the bottom of the face. So let's keep that on the side this time. So we're going to start with a sphere, I think. Um, you could, you might think start with a cone, but it'd just be hard to bring out the sides. But I think we're going to start with the sphere. And scale it up. Turn off perspective, because what we're going to do now is slice across, um, split mask. Delete. Now we've kind of got a helmet. Uh, I'm going to go close holes to close that bottom and drop this to the eye line where I was talking about before. Scale it down, um, move it to about here, and then we're going to lift it up and scale it right up. All right, that's way too big, but it's a bit of a start. So drop that to the eye line we were talking about before. And now it's got to be about that tall, about that narrow. So that means um, for this head we, with a helmet, we've got to drop some of this hair, which is fine. And we're going to pull it in as well because it's bring the middle to there. There we go. Now, um, helmets don't always really sit flat on a person, they, they kind of tilt it a little bit. So, but let's not do that yet because we want the symmetry to stay intact. Now, if we go, if we mask off this bottom area, and um, because we've still got the cylinder, it's very neat. Extract, done. That's kind of given us a bit of our sort of rim. Um, okay, let's do this one and then. So what I've done is I've shift clicked to get the outside polygroup because we know that when we extract, it makes all the surfaces a different polygroup. Um, because if I, when I've gone inflate, it has kind of um, screwed it up. So I'm just going to scale it up actually. It's going to keep bringing these other polygons that I've just masked. And then I will squash it in a bit. This helmet I know is looking quite big at the moment. We will um, squ um, squash it down a little bit. So I kind of need to make that just a tiny bit bigger because it's a miniature. Now, I've got to turn on X and uh, X symmetry. And we're going to, with perspective, sill on, mask. Okay, so we're going to struggle when we do that. So let's turn on, it's probably time now to decimate, sorry, dynamesh this helmet. So now we've just got a bit more geometry. Let's. Sorry, let's mask off this sort of middle portion until we get a, a, just a bit thinner than the rim. Extract. 
And then we're going to do it again here. Turn on Y. Local symmetry as well. Because currently the helmet's symmetrical. Sorry, I think Z is what we want turned on. And we're going to try and get it to the same thickness. There we go. Extract. Done. So that's kind of the shape of the helmet. We're going to shrink this and wrap it to the head a bit better later. But we're also going to come in here and lift up these in a second. So actually, let's do that now. It's going to make it a little bit easier to look at. So, like in the helmets, we've so what I've just done is I've masked off the top to keep the top neat. And then I'm going to come in and start lifting up the eye line. I can also start, I can also lift this up as well, just to, um, so we can see through it. So pull that back, lift that forward. All right, let's, Cool. And we'll come and do a nose piece and stuff like that later. So I'm going to um, Z remesh this, but because I know that I've got them all in different groups, I'm going to go up here to Z remesh, keep groups, and Z remesh. So that's going to keep that outline from before. And so I can still shift, um, select this, but it's just now a bit neater. There we go. Good. Um, Mirror world. Turn off uh, body frame. So we've got these two. Let's go. Hmm, okay. So same thing, same deal. I shift click the outside. Uh, let's find the gizmo. It's in the middle of nowhere. And then we're going to uh, bring it to the size of this outside um, rim. Same deal here. Shift click this outside and bring it to about there. There we go. So that's kind of got the thickness we're after. Now, what we need to do is straighten up these edges. So I'm going to go and mask the sides. Shift click to invert. Now with symmetry turned on, center the gizmo, to, um, so alt and then the location marker to the sides and just scale them in so that they're dead straight. Just like that. Perfect. Same thing on this one here. And this time we've got Z symmetries turned on instead of X. Same teal. Center. Perfect. All right. Now that's a lot neater. I'm going to merge this one down with the other one. And I'm also going to cut them off here just because they're showing up later. Uh, and then close holes. Cool. That's the basic shape of our helmet created. We just need to make the nose guard. So the nose guard, I'm going to do one just like what we've got here. So, because we're also going to do the, those eye pieces as well. So to do that, I'm just going to do it from a sphere and just sculpt it. So we're going to go insert sphere. I just after this auto save apparently. And again, the more um, so tools you have in your project, the longer it's going to take to auto save. So that's just an incentive to keep it small. All right, let's scale it in. X, lift this up. So how low should the nose guard go is um, a bit of a question. So some of the nose guards I've seen go right down to the mouth. And it kind of makes sense because it stops like this a sword blow from coming across, so why would it stop just at the nose? It makes sense to cover the mouth because then it, if a sword comes across, it still protects the cheeks. And there's a bunch of helmets that have um, the nose guards that are like that anyway. So it's just preference, what you think looks right or wrong. And again, if you're mirroring a piece of artwork from a movie or um, some sort of historical source, then that's going to dictate it. So the nose guard, though, whatever it, um, happens, it still needs to go straight into the model. You might be able to get away with lifting it up because obviously when we print it, it's at 45 degrees. You just don't want it overhanging like that because that's not going to print and it'd be a pain to support. So now we've got this, this in. Let's make some sort of a shape. So that, um, just something a little bit decorative. Sideways. Okay, and now back face mask. 
and just go straight across. It's going to look like a mess on the inside, but we're not looking at it from the inside, just the outside, so it's okay. And I'm going to... Actually, I want that top to be flat. So I'm going to spin that up, mask, and do that same trick we did earlier, just to flatten the top. And then I'll put it back to where it was. Now, these aren't quite sharp enough. So if I brought this out, which is something you could do, then you've got an, something overhanging. So what's better is just to, to turn off back, back face mask and bring something in to make the points. Now, we want to see remesh that because that's a bit of a mess at the moment. There, um, smooth it, bring those points back. All right, so we've got sort of a decorative um, nose guard piece in there. Now let's, now I'm just going to squash that in a bit because so that we can see more of the mouth, but it's still connected the whole way down, which is the important bit for printing, but it just doesn't look quite so prominent. And so there we go. And I think it would look better if it was curved as well. It, so just a bit like that. So cool. Now we want to do these sort of decorative pieces around the eyes and they're kind of always in a horn shape. So I, everything like that, I just start with a sphere. So drop in your sphere, bring that over to the side here. Scale it right down, down, spin it, and simply move it, move it up like that. Um, Accu curve, just to pull it down a bit. Mirror and weld. No, sorry, that's got local symmetry. Now we go mirror and weld. There we go. So then we obviously we'll need to do a piece in the middle. And then we also kind of want this to come back like that and have a bit of a dog leg. Stretch that up a bit. Because then we're going to put a little rivet um, in there. It's not going to show up necessarily for printing, but it would look nice. Um, this needs to go sort of flat into the helmet. This is all right in the way that that's sticking off. But so let's go mirror world. All right, now I want to flatten this to the helmet for this one. So, so sometimes you can um, sculpt sort of designs into this. That's why um, I've got up, oh no, I had up rather the um, Thayden helmet from Lord of the Rings because that's a good example of um, a helmet with like lots of filigree put on it. And in one of the books that, on making of the movie, they talk about how it's inspired really heavily off that Sutton Ho helmet with all of that sort of filigree. And so all of these sort of pieces here would have like designs um, carved into them, which um, yet yeah, again is not that practical for us printing but you could do some very basic sort of shapes and we'll do that down the line. So just move that a little bit. There we go. So that's all right. That's not so bad. And we just want one more piece to go across the middle. All right, sphere. Same as before. So a little bit of, um, I guess, trivia. When I was making these helmets, I had assumed that, um, well, it's just one of the things, like the more detail the model has, the um, like the more prestige the unit must have or something like that. It's just kind of a thing in tabletop gaming that um, I guess comes from 40K that like, oh, the fancier a model looks and fancy models have lots of rivets mm -hmm. and lots of pieces and stuff like that. But one thing I read with um, these sort of helmets was that the ones with all of the rivets are the ones that are made out of more pieces and they're the ones that are weaker than a helmet that's made out of one piece. So, um, yeah, I don't know, that's a bit of trivia as we're making this. And maybe that's wrong, but that's, that's something I'd read in one of the um, Osbury um, books. The Osbury books, they have um, a series called Men at Arms and they go over all the sort of the uniforms and stuff for um, and the equipment in most of these, I think they cover all the historical periods really. They're a great resource for um, just getting some historical accuracy. 
And especially for time periods like this where there just isn't um, that much. Like we've got the Bayou Tapestry to look at, which is um, interesting in its own right. But again, that's a, sort of a really stylized sort of look of what people would be dressed like in this time period. So I've just subdivided that a bunch of times because I'm coming in with this Chisel React brush to um, put in a rivet. Just in there, it's going to be just the ball. It's going to be quite big. Um, I might do another one as part of this. I might bring that up, make it wide, drop it in. So stretch this up, stretch this down. Divide. Uh, Let's put something else there to show that like it's just been both done. And then you can assume that this piece is sort of part of the eyebrows and it's all kind of as one. So let's start merging these together and then we'll do a little bit more sculpting with the two of them. So this sort of um, nose brow, let's, I want to divide all of those pieces, sorry, data mesh all of these pieces. So it's at this point you want to go in and save this tool as your helmet builder and that way you can come in and you've still got all of these pieces, you'll end up putting them in folders and you can reuse it to make a different nose brow. I might actually get that chisel brush and go in here and go like, make that a bit bigger. This is going to be really optimistic to try and paint any of this, but um, for now it looks cool. There we go. Cool. So there's just a bit of detail in the, that helmet. So. We want to put some rivets in the top of this. So let's look at the geometry we've got. Um, there's not worse. It's actually two different pieces. So I'm going to just dynamesh this at the highest resolution because that way it's just going to join the two together and give me some space for rivets. So this is symmetrical. And so, sorry, local symmetry with X turned on. Yep. But if I also turn on Sorry, Y and Z, so not Y, sorry, just Z. I'll get symmetry on both sides. Now, my experience doing rivets um, on both sides of this, it gets a bit finicky to paint. It looks it looks better uh, painting-wise when you've just got the one. So that's where we're gonna start. But I'm gonna leave that symmetry on though, just help me find the center line. So I'm just gonna go in and go, so one, about a third of the width, turn it around. Same height, same, same deal, just a roughly the same height, about a third of the width. Same deal up here. Same deal here. And then on top, I'm going to go a third of the width. Same deal again. Let's smooth that out. There we go. And now we want to go around this as well. Um, same sort of thing again. Just kind of mesh that the whole way up. Uh, let's turn on Z as well and local symmetry because it's symmetrical. That way we can just come in here and do this. So one, two, and then we'll turn off Z because we're only doing another one here. Perfect. Actually, that's too big. These are all too big, but it, that's just how they're going to have to read the printing. All right, now the last thing we need, I'm gonna skip cheat guards because we have a nice sort of beard going. But if you wanna do cheat guards, that's just adding sort of a um, cube, making it into a plane, shaping it and stuff like that. But I wanna leave that. So I wanna put all of this helmet all together. And merge down, because it's quite wide compared to the head. So we're gonna, and that's because we came from a sphere, but sort of a helmet's gonna kind of have more flat sides. So just gently push that in. And now it's looking a bit tall, so we're gonna drop it. Oh, and that's coming up to the uh, mast head. But, oh sorry, that's not the mast head, that's the mast part from the helmet. There we go. Either way, still gonna drop a bit of the helmet because it's, it's looking a bit tall. The eye pieces kind of fine. This is all fine. And we're going to get rid of the hair because. Uh, 
Let's see what we need to be big here. But other okay, so that's that's all right now. The the rivets are looking a bit big to, to me, but that's just how it's going to work for um, a model like this. So I've kind of distorted this shape by moving it around. It's going to go actually auto groups. So auto groups is going to make all these things that were different sort of poly meshes, um, so poly groups because from extracting all the different meshes are now um, individual groups. So I can just isolate the bit that I want to stretch it and make it a bit wider. So I can still come in because I haven't dynameshed this whole thing together yet. I can still come in and edit the bits that I want. So, but I'm okay with that for now. Um, so go ahead and save this as your, again, um, to your uh, helmet builder. So I'm going to go merge visible. So that's going to put all of these into a sub tool up here. And just for, for me, I'm going to delete all because I don't need those anymore. And I've got our helmet. Now let's go back into this. Insert model with helmet. All right, I'm going to delete this one with hair because there we go. And that hair sits nicely over the back for now. Um, my laptop's having a bit of trouble doing the recording, apparently. All right, so we might cover the shield in the next video because we want to cover the sword and the axe. So let's have a look at the axe from um, earlier. So I've got a couple of... Um, I've got, also got my sword. It's all loaded up in here as well we can have a look at. So this axe and scabbard. Um, so if we look at this one, the scabbard and the sword have been pulled to join the rest of this mesh so there's no empty spaces under there. Um, I think the sword, the scabbard does its own component. The sword, I think, is probably still in separate pieces. Okay, and the axe is all dynamesh into one. So the axe is pretty simple, it's just a cylinder. I think this is a cylinder, and then that's a, pl a plane. So we're going to go ahead and make one of those just in here. Yeah, the helmet rivets are big, but that's, how, that's just what they need to be to paint. All right, let's go cylinder. So I think um, I want this to be a, quite a big two-handed axe at the moment. Might change that as we go. Actually, it wouldn't be too bad to have a, but let's do a small axe actually, and then that way we can have them with the small axe and a shield. I have no idea how we're going to pose this one yet. So um, you know we just spoke about earlier that the angles being quite thin. Um, it's I wouldn't, and this sort of width of the belt, I wouldn't go any skinnier than, than sort of this sort of size for, the, for an axe um, or a handle. So that's that's about what we were going to leave that. And because it's a one-handed axe, we're gonna, that's going to be fine for now. Let's put that over here on the side. Um, insert. Actually, I'm just going to duplicate that. Drop it right down. Scale it up. Make it bigger. Cool. So that's the um, like the axe as it joins to the timber. So Dynamesh that a bunch. So now I want to turn on not X symmetry, but I think it's Y symmetry because if I want to make a change on this side, I want it to show up on the other side. So that's not Y symmetry. That's Z symmetry apparently. So from the front. So I want to pull this back to make that little sort of pick head. And then we're going to pull a mask um, down this center bit like that. Invert it and then pull it away. There we go. So that's, that's come out there. Let's go and mesh that again. Um, smooth that. So turn this back on. So to make this axe head, let's make one that comes out and then drops down around. So it's, we just pull it out, pull it down. There we go. So there we go. That's a, that's our quick shape of an axe, um, just from one cylinder. I thought it was going to mix a plane, but um, didn't need to in the end. So, but I've kind of destroyed the cylinder here. So I just want to go in there and get rid of some of that. All right, so this flatten tool is going to become very useful in a second because that's how we're going to make this sort of axe head. So these were all done with sort of beaten metal and whatnot. So 
kind of fitting that was kind of the same process we're using here. There we go. Kind of got our blade here. Um, I kind of want to make a point at the bottom. The point at the bottom is going to be tricky when it comes to supporting, but just for now, let's, let's point in, let's sharpen it up here. C remesh. And then, actually, not C remesh yet because we need to come in here, put in a little um, bolt that's going to run across the side. I'm going to also, while I'm here, just actually give this some more shape rather than rushing through it. Be easier to shape some more of it once we've remeshed it. It's just while it's got um, more polygons. Same here. Alright, cool. Now let's see remesh this. Okay, we're at the 40 minute mark. I, I don't like to go over an hour. So we'll cover the shield next and we might do a sword and scabbard um, later on because he's already got an axe, so. All right, divide, just once, start smoothing it out. Um, just gonna grab the flatten tool, and just go over it a little bit, just to get some sharp edges back. But that's more than fine. So it's a little bit thin actually here. So back face mask, just gonna pull that out. There we go. And then I actually might wanna go in Flatten some more. There we go. So let's. Oh, actually, we've, this is a bit boring. This axe. So let's turn up Dynamesh, smooth it out. Damn standard. So we've got these um, alphas in here that are already there. This one is kind of like wood grain. Let's drop the intensity and run it up. Let's actually isolate this. Um, let's drop the intensity even further. So I just would do oh, size one row up front. And side because the symmetry is not turned on actually. Never mind. Um, let's go around the side again. We haven't got back face masks turned on, so where it's pushing on one side, it's also pulling on the other. So, like, we're just going to do really exaggerated wood grain. Smooth it out a bit. There we go. It doesn't look just like a simple beam anymore. Um, we don't need to do anything on the top because we won't see that whatsoever. Uh, we just want to make that one piece. Dynamesh. Um, that's that's fine for now. Cool. So we let's let's place this in, in, in the hand now. So we'll rotate it with the gizmo. Let's so holding Alt to move this pivot point back. Let's put that in the hand. I'm just gonna lift that up. So this hand doesn't quite fit this axe yet, but that's that's all right because we're gonna um, we need to make the hands probably a tiny fraction bigger anyway. We want to do that with the size. Okay, so these one, these tools up here, I've lifted straight from deformation down here. So there's a bunch more. These are the ones that I like to use. Um, I think contrast is useful, inflate is useful, and S bend. But some of these I don't think I've really ever used. For some of them, I use with the gizmo and stuff like that. But we'll just go with size. Where is it? Where's... No. So, oh, size W with the gizmo, and we'll just move it back to where it's got to go. Again, we probably could have just done that with the um, gizmo as it was. I was hoping it would move it um, on the spot, but I haven't used that tool in a while. There we go. So if you didn't want to do a shield, that's ready to go. But let's let's do a shield, because then we'll pose the figure in the next video. Um, and then that way we've got something to start printing. All right, so let's go back to this um, scene here. Let's look at this shield. Uh, I want to make polymesh 3D. And I'm just getting rid of this tool. Now, blade all. Now this shield here is um, I've done a bunch of these with different designs on them as well. So let's talk about just having a simple sort of wood grain at the back. The sort of the trim. Um, yeah, we'll try and make something exactly like this. How big is this roughly? Um, it's probably. Where is? Uh, well, we, let's get rid of this one. Get rid of this one. Let's get rid of these. 
There we go. This is our seam. So we kind of want this shield to be about half the height of the person. So we're going to do this in a different um, tool because we're going to save that tool as a shield builder. So let's, but let's just turn perspective. Um, yep, it is off. That's that's about right. Um, all the shields are different sizes anyway, so we'll just make it the size that we think is appropriate. And thickness as well. Um, mine are about this thin, which makes them quite thin, but they're not that flimsy either. But some of the um, shields that are in plastic kits are kind of like this sort of thick, um, where they're like resin or plastic. But I think we can get thinner than that. So let's just go about this size. All right, now make poly mesh 3D to isolate it. So we want to add wood grain. We want to add the little um, buck on the front, the trim on the side, and then the little beams that run across the back like we've got here. So let's do the wood grain first. So if we go, we've just done a bit of wood grain. Let's do some more though. Now, how wide should a beam be? Um, that way it looks fine to me. This is all by eye at this point because most people, well, lots of shields um, for miniatures don't actually have any wood grain at the back. Um, and mine didn't for a long time, but it's just a nice little detail to add. And now let's do subtract. Run it off all the time. There we go. That's some sort of basic, basic wood grain. Let's just do one more subtraction. There we go. That's fine as far as I'm concerned. And I'm going to shrink that to here. So. Let's do it with the wood grain on both sides. Lots of these shields have leather sort of covering them or something. And that's why they're bound at the sides. Well, one of the reasons why they're bound at the sides. And that's nice for free handing. But it, it's pretty easy. If you want to cover up one side, just put your cylinder. But it's timber where um, you've got both, like the timber on both sides, which looks a bit more interesting. So there we go. This is sort of our generic sort of timber beam. My, Go through one more time, sorry. Cool. And it's got detail on both sides. So if we want timber on both sides, well, I'm, it's pretty clear what I'm going to do. I'm going to duplicate this, copy it to this side, probably going to spin it so that it doesn't look symmetrical. Do the next one, the other side, and in this case, spin it this way so it's not symmetrical. Um, and we're also going to change just the heights of some of these so that where they are similar, it's somewhere separate. And we need a couple more. There we go. So then we're gonna merge down with these. All right, so we've kind of got like a, our timber sort of wall here. And there's a couple of ways to um, make this into a circle with Boolean stuff like that, which is the way we're gonna do it. So this is the size of our basic shield. Let's duplicate this. Um, you fold it back up. So we want to make a boolean. Um, so boolean is our cutting away um, shapes. So if we go insert cube, it's going to give us our cube, right? So we want to make a sort of a cookie cutter. So let's go to this one and make that really long and put that roughly in the center. Let's turn off this. And let's, so this, if we turn on firstly live boolean, that's going to show us the booleans that we're doing. So I'm going to move this down to the center. Um, this is quite thick. It, it will make it thin up if we need to later. So the way booleans work, you've got your two objects. You want one to cut away from the other. Up here is subtract. It's the second one across. And both tools need to be turned on. Uh, and one needs to be on top of the other. Apparently, sorry, it's, it's going to get those in the right order. There we go, sorry, okay. Yeah, the one that's cutting away is underneath with subtract turned on. Turn off all of the other things. There we go, it's cut away our hole. Um, it's a bit finicky, I wish it was a bit simpler. So we're just going to go Boolean, make Boolean mesh. So it's going to make a new mesh in a new tool. And that's it over here. So let's just delete this, 
delete that. Insert, here we go. So this is our cookie cutter here. What's that there? That is our shield from, um, shape. So we're gonna use that same cookie cutter on this here. Except this is gonna be the subtraction and this is the shield we're gonna be left with. So let's go now make the boolean mesh. So if you want to do sort of a tower shield or something like that, you do the exact same thing. You make the shape, make the cookie, cookie cutter and get your timber beams. Um, just quickly, we'll talk about once, once this is made, we'll insert back our, um, our new shield. Let's get rid of the cookie cutter, um, save it if, if, you, if you want to use it again, or put it in a new folder and hide all of them. I'm not interested in doing that for now because I've already got all of those pieces. Um, actually, first things first, we need to put this over um, across the middle and give the inside, like between the beams, some thickness. We don't want any holes. So let's merge the two of those down in a second. First, let's duplicate that. Merge down. Cool. And then we're going to Dynamesh this at about a thousand. Let's give it a minute. There we go. So this is our basic shield. So that now needs a trim. The trim, let's do here. So polyframe, unfortunately, these are not separate poly groups. So let's mask off the insides. Split masks. Let's get rid of the center. And now we've got this sort of rim, which is the poly groups around the outside. I'll turn on double so we can see both sides. So from this, we want to extrude these out and um, to create our rim. I was going to see a rematch this because, and then go half, half, half. There we go. It's not going to really smooth very well because when you, you've got sort of these open-ended things and you try and smooth, it doesn't do the um, the edge loops on the side. But anyway. So Z modeler here, we haven't touched it yet. Uh, we'll use it for things when we start to do armor and chest plates. So we're just gonna go here to, um, so if you go right click when you're over, so firstly Z modeler, if you, it's different per vertices, which are the corners, faces and edges. So over a face, right click, find extrude over here, all polygons. So then extrude all polygons will show up. Let's bring that out here. Now it's kept this as a polygroup. The, the new face is a polygroup as well as um, these two sides are now new polygroups. So I want to now make this trim stick out wider than um, this here. So for one, let's see what happens if we go, let's bring that in and we scale it this way. Now do, in doing that, it showed us that where it's not been neat so we're going to mask um, and flatten like we've done before. And then we're going to work out how we're going to, um, where is the x-axis we want mirror world, but we also want the Z, sorry, we want Y. Okay, mirror and world, just to copy it to the other side. Oh. Oh, there it is. That's why mirror world is. There we go. All right, now it's just now it's even. So there we go. That's our basic sort of trim. Let's see, remesh that, and just smooth it to round the sides. There we go. Um, and okay, cool. That sort of overlaps a little bit with with this. So when we join those two together, we'll get our nice um, face. So again, if you wanted a um, shield that was. Uh, flat on the sides. Let's actually merge these down for now because we're going to keep them. So if you wanted one that was flat on a side to do uh, freehanding or you've got transfers, stuff like that, then what we would do is just insert a new sphere 90 and scale it down, scale it up, flatten it. And bring it to the front and you would just take this this piece in here this internal one um order groups and you would just make that thinner and then dynamish them all together but we're not going to do that for this one so come back to this tool um sh 
control shift to bring all the things back. So let's make this little buckle on the front. So make it about that big. There. Bring it in. So because this is now in the center of our model, obviously we had the um, the shield off to the side earlier. But we've got it in the center now. We did that with the S pivot. Let's add a cylinder. Where's the cylinder? Or sphere, sorry. There we go. Let's go down. Easy. That's our little um, buckle. Now let's dress this up so that it looks a bit interesting. Just off the side. So we a quick Google search. Now if we just look at these shields, they have all kind of got some sort of um, embossing across the top. Some of them are flat. They've all got these um, rivets, so we're going to add those. But we might do some sort of design that goes um, across there. Yeah. And we'll do that with the radial symmetry. So first things first, we're going to Dynamesh quite high. Chisel React. Rate, uh, activate symmetry. And then radial. So it's the wrong face, the wrong face. There we go, correct face. I want six rivets. So I'm just going to go to the top and do six rivets. But now when I do this, it's not quite upright, but that's fine. It's a round shield. We'll never know which side's upright. I will get rid of that in a second. Uh, it's sticking a bit too far out, so I just want to pull it back. Now I want to do a sort of a design across here, um, here, and that's just going to be like drawing something like a spiral. But oh, actually, I might just go with that. So what I was going to do was turn on um, the radial symmetry to three. And let's let's do that. Let's pull this here. So go negative. This is interesting. And all of these shapes have got, are like very sort of primitive because it's just whatever someone can make with their hands in a hammer. But um, you can make any sort of design here. But it's just it's just something more interesting. And so when you paint this gold or silver, the light would just bounce off in a different way. All right, I'm back. I just had a quick computer crash, so um, I'm just going to come in and redo a bit of the shield. So this is um, a shield that I've done um, before. It's the exact same as what we've just done, but I'm just gonna come in and redo this. So I'll turn that up, I'll make this sort of spiral pattern I was talking about before, and then I'll move on. Well, that means you put some balls there. There we go. There's a sort of very sort of primitive um, design. And yeah, I've gotta get rid of a hole in here as well. So just sort of Chisel, doesn't matter, I've got radial symmetry turned on because I'm going to be in the center. Hold Alt and just make that big enough that we can squeeze a hand in there like we did before. And let's just smooth that out to, to hide it. There we go. All right, so that's where we were um, before the crash. So what we're going to do is do these metal bars that are going to run across. So I'll insert my um, cube. I'll come down here to initialize and do a G cube with one, one, one. Might give it uh, three or four on this side though. So let's see where those extra polygons are. They're this way. So I'm gonna spin that around. You could just insert poly loops, but that's what was making my computer crash. So I'm not gonna do that. So activate symmetry. Uh, not gonna have local symmetry. I want X and Y so that when I move one polygon, I move them all. Um, that way I can, when I'm doing this on a flat sort of surface, sorry, here, this is what I need. Um, I can make the, the shape and the profile that we want. So I'm gonna, it's gonna be a bit like this, and then it's gonna go in. Um, no, all right, no, that's just double. No, let's not divide, let's do it this way. All right, cool. So I've kind of got a bit of the sort of the shape we want. And so this metal bar is going to go right up to this hole because it's going to like kind of go inside and make the handle. So it would run across and be the handle that um, people would be holding. But obviously we're not going to do the handle because we just have a hand that we need to place in there. But 
What we can still do is the rivets, which we're going to do in a second. I'm going to make that a bit rounder. Squash it at the top. Cool. Alright, let's get out of the poly frame. Divide it once. Let's come in and let's turn off Y. Let's put in rivet and rivet. Local symmetry off. Mirror up. Sorry. Mirror world. Cool. Um, that's the basic sort of handle. I might push that further back that way just so it's easy to see. And then we want a bar running across the top and the bottom. So that's just going to be a simple cube. We're going to mirror and weld um, up and down. So insert, cube, squash, raise, perspective, off. About that big. Let's make it run a bit longer actually. And then so we want to kind of stick out that same sort of magical distance we've come up with that is big enough to show up. Um, now, Dynamesh, at a resolution that um, we can... Actually, let's put them all on. And then local symmetry. At a resolution that we can make these um, rivets in a second. So I've got all the symmetries turned on because I want to move it on both sides as, as well as um, so it's in both left and right and the front and the back. I will have to um, actually go in there though and back face mask that. There we go. Down the mesh. So this stuff, I can just squash it back in. Cool. It's still a bit thick for the other one. Come in here, the symmetry is on. Easy. Rivet. Bit big. There we go. Alright. Done. And now we want actually we do want to across here as well. There we go. So we want to mirror and weld that up and down. Except that's not up and down. Y is up and down in ZBrush. No, it's not. Here we can see. No, we don't want local symmetry. That's what we don't want. There we go. Problem solved. So this is our simple um, angle saxon shield. Let's merge these all down. So again, save this. This is as part of your shield builder. That way you can come in and tweak the shapes up if you want. Turn off the symmetry. Perfect. So let's now bring that back into our scene here. Insert. Now, um, S pivot to bring it to the center. Now that's too small because this is one of my old ones. Let's just scale this up to the size we had it before it crashed. There we go. So we've made our shield. We made a axe. Let's actually bring the S pivot to the center. So in the next video, we're going to pose the model and make him do something. We'll do the chain mail after, just because that's some advanced poly modeling. But this is now ready that we can get him doing something. All right, so that's going to wrap up this video. Um, unfortunately, I hope it's hoping to get it through a bit more, but I guess hair, beard, um, helmet, axe, and shield is still a fair bit. Um, at this point, you're probably starting to see that um, like this is like looking like an actual sort of uh, miniature model now. Um, beforehand, when we were looking at, say, like just the um, the legs or this scampson by itself, it was looking a bit, oh, I'm not sure what it's going to look like in the end, but actually at the moment, it's kind of actually all looking okay. We've got a really nice face going on, um, a helmet. The clothes are all there. We've, the, I'm really happy with what we've done down here on the feet and the ankles. Um, just same with a shield and a simple axe. And this is, hasn't really taken that long. Um, I know it, it sounds a lot more daunting than it really is. So yeah, in the next video we will pose the T um, pose. So we have this basic sort of T pose underneath, which was um, just like the stuff we made in video one, or if you downloaded it from Google Drive. So we're going to pose that into a pose that I haven't decided yet. We're going to talk about posing in the next video, and that's going to be in a separate sort of sub tool. So if I go low tool, uh, YouTube. No, I'll talk about that in the next video. <laughs> so um, I'm going to leave this one here. I'll see you in the next one.